And ladies and gentlemen, we've got another panel of the Archive uh, as Project Conference coming up. This will be a meeting, a conversation, a discussion, a dialogue. between Ariel Azulai, who is an eminent Israeli philosopher, cultural scholar, curator, and a theoretician of uh, photography. She's written two books that will be very interesting in the context of this uh, debate, namely Death's Showcase and the Civil Contract of Photography. Ariella will be talking to Akram Zatari, a Lebanese artist, who is the uh, founder of the Arab Image Foundation, one of the more interesting archival institutions that I'm aware of. The foundation was established in order to create an archive of images of the Arab world that would representations made from the inside, not by persons coming from the outside, from the West, in order to avoid uh, a colonist's, a colonizer's glance, and I think that's about it. By way of introduction, and we can proceed to the panel. Okay, first I would like to thank the organizers and uh, everybody who invited me and gave me this wonderful opportunity to participate in this important event on the archive. And of course, uh, for this wonderful opportunity to uh, speak about archive with Akram Zatari, whose work I admire. Um, it's okay. What I would like to present today is very briefly two archives that I created or I curated or whatever verb would be uh, adequate to use when we speak about archives that are not given, that someone initiated. So I would present briefly two archives and the logic behind them uh, in order to arrive to what preoccupy me now which is the possibility of creating what I call potential history. And just saying briefly again, what is potential history before trying to articulate it visually, is uh, where the place from where I'm coming, Israel, is a place that was uh, created, that was established on the ruin of another society. And that society is not only Palestinian, it's Palestinian and Jewish society that was there prior to 48. And what I'm trying to do in my work through the use of photography and the use of the archive is to reconceptualize political philosophy, to create and shape new concepts, new tools in order to think differently history. And the archive of potential history is somehow inspired by Hannah Arendt and Walter Benjamin. Walter Benjamin uh, we have heard uh, a lot about him this morning in relation not to messianism, but more to his term of incomplete history. But let me start. What you see here on the left is the materialization of the first archive, Act of State, 67 to 2007. 67 is the begin. Oh, what's happening here? Six it's not my computer, so this one. But if I want the... Uh, the cursor. Uh, if you want, what okay, it's this. This will be fine. Just to show, to point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can just do okay. So, uh, 67 is the beginning of the occupation of the uh, West Bank and Gaza, and the other archive that you see its materialization in space here is a Constituent Violence, or its title in English, that will be from Palestine to Israel, and it deals with the four formative years of the state uh, of Israel. So this is the deployment of the archive in space. What you see here is the timeline and the development, the, the fracturing of the timeline by many other thematic lines. Uh, this is again more of the installation. This is the form, uh, the book form of the archive. 
and you see the way that images are deployed in it. But I don't want to present today uh, many images of the archive. I would like to present the theoretical, political, or civil questions that preoccupied me while building this archive. Speaking about an archive that goes from 67 to 2007 is uh, an archive of the occupation. We have to ask about space, images coming from the occupied territory starting from 67, and we have to ask also a question about the body politics. Do we deal necessarily or solely with Palestinians as occupied persons? But if you take any arbitrary collection of images, you see that this is totally deconstructed, these three limitations of time, space, and body politic. This image, for example, where you see Palestinian workers, it is not in the occupied territories. It is in Petah Tikva, five minutes from where I am living, and the driver sitting here is an Israeli Jew uh, hiring, if you can call this form of exploitation, hiring Palestinian workers. If you look at these images, you can uh, I mistakenly take this for Palestinians and this one for Israeli, but this allegedly Palestinian is what is called Mistar Rev, which is Israeli soldier pretending to be Palestinians in order to uh, arrest Palestinians. So you see that all these limitations are completely uh, undermined by the pho photographs themselves. So the question was how to relate to these three limits constraint that seek to contain the occupation as something that is taking place out there, behind uh, a wall. So either I had to criticize them, or ignoring them, or eliminating them, or what I choose to do, make them visible, archive them, archive these limitations as features of the political regime. Saying it differently, the idea was to force the discourse of the occupation to become visible and to, exp to explore the way that it creates its objects. Its objects are, for example, an occupied person. What is an occupied person? What is this abnormality? Occupation or silent occupation or wanted persons, etc., etc. So the idea was to create the archival conditions for writing a civil history uh, of the regime of occupation. And let me just exemplify this through two photographs. What is silent or quiet occupation? What we see here on the foreground of this photograph is a scene of arrest. You see this Palestinian arrested by these two soldiers. But if you look at this photograph more carefully, you see behind the Palestinian, you see a third soldier with a club and he is chasing away all these young Palestinians from being there, from creating a kind of public sphere, from participating in a situation and defining it differently. So what we have here are not quiet occupation as the re political regime pretended to be, but what we have through this image is the creation of, or the making of, silent occupation. Or this photograph, for example, which bothered me for a certain while, it was on my desk, when an it bothered me because there was something familiar and unfamiliar in it. And when I was young, I never came back from school with my classmate going like that in the street. See the distance between them, at least one meter between each of them. And this, they obeyed the regulation. There were regulations not to gather together. Palestinians were not allowed in the first years of the occupation to assemble in the street. So what we have here again is the fabrication of the silent occupation, the violent measures to create this. So this is the way that I tried to archive images in this uh, 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 in this archive, in order not to take them for truth uh, evidence, for truth claim, but to take them as containing the event of photography. So the question was how to suspend the constraints of the phenomenal field imposed by the political regime on these three uh, levels, space, time, and body politic. Or saying it differently, again, inspired by Foucault, which was also one of our heroes this morning uh, through the lecture of John Tag how to create a new surface of appearance. New surface of appearance, and I don't have time to dwell on it, but uh, uh, the idea of Foucault is that the surface of appearance, this is what determines what can be seen uh, in, a, in an archive. And what you have here is uh, uh, an allegorical, I think, an allegorical image of the wall, because what you have here is the, the ideal type or the, the idealistic uh, vision of the Israeli militaries or about Palestine or about the occupied territories. We don't see Palestine. Palestine is out there behind the wall 
or what you see here in an uh, image from uh, Sharif Sirhan from 2007, what you see is Gaza behind a dark wall, behind a dark screen. So it's the fabrication of Gaza as being out there, not in any uh, relation with uh, Israel. So what I try to do is to go from the occupied territories as an out there behind a dark screen to reconstruct zones of, or types of mixture and friction. And what you see here architectonically, if we can say, you see another image of the wall, which is completely the opposite of this one. This is the way the wall is built. It really split uh, uh, urban and rural uh, environment. It uh, split Palestinians from their land. It split between Israeli and Palestinian, between Palestinians from this type to that type, etc., etc. And you have this image that I showed earlier, you have, uh, of course, a lot of uh, friction zones between Israeli and Palestinian around the, the labor market. And when they are not allowed anymore to come to Israel legally, they are coming illegally, and there are more zones of frictures because they are illegal. So they are arrested and they have another type of relationship with the Israeli Jews. So this was in terms of space. In terms of time, I try to overcome one of the main features of the political regime, which is temporariness. The occupation is always be considered as being temporary. It will be end tomorrow. We will just have Obama with peace processes, or Blair, or whoever, and the occupation will be uh, over. But as you see here, it's 67 till when, I have no idea. We have to deal with this situation as a permanent situation and not believe the allegedly uh, temporariness imposed by the regime. And another feature in terms of time that I had to overcome or to suspend or to problematize is dealing with images from the occupation as being a one-time episode. It is always a one-time episode. We destroyed this house because the Palestinian was suspected for terror. And we destroyed that house because another reason, because it was illegal construction, etc., etc. So when we are speaking about destruction of 300,000 uh, buildings, you cannot uh, accept you can't admit this logic of the regime that every destruction has its own logic. We have to understand it as a system. So how to move from the temporariness or the one-time episodes to reconstruct the recurrency of the temporary measures or saying it differently, the modus operandi of the regime. So you can see here, this looks like a temporary checkpoint. They just installed this, and they just put this sign of stop for inspection. But you see, these are not really temporary structures. These are permanent temporary structures. And this event is not a one-timely event. It's not a one-time event. It is a recurrence way of the army to deal with Palestinians. And there is another notion uh, another feature that is related to time, and I will uh, uh, develop it a little bit later. When you're looking at this image, for example, from 71 from Gaza, we are looking at an image coming from Shati refugee camp. And Shati refugee camp, it's not something that started with uh, the occupation of 67. Already saying refugee camp, as if it was a natural name of a place, we have to deconstruct it and go back to 48, of course, for the creation of the refugee camps of Palestinians that were expelled from Israel, from Palestine, sorry. And then I'm going to the third uh, dimension that I had to deconstruct when I built this archive is the body politic. In the eyes of the regime, the body politic is only citizens. Citizens and the others. What are the others? Occupied persons, refugees, stateless, illegal, etc., etc. And what I did in my archive is trying to reconceptualize the body politic differently and to uh, relate to all the governed population between the sea and the river as uh, uh, included in the. Uh, uh, in the body politic. And look, for example, at this image from 68. This is an image that is coming from uh, uh, Tel Aviv. It's not coming from the occupied territories. And what you have here, and these kind of buses, I was in them always in Tel Aviv when I took the bus a few years later. I was too young at the time. But 10 years later, it was still the same. Palestinians were in the bus, and the policeman or the soldier came up, and he asked for papers only from Palestinians who at least looked as Palestinians. So this zone of rictures, we cannot deal with it as 
taking pl uh, place in another planet, this is part of the Israeli regime. And here, another image that will lead me to the second archive is a, a, an image that was taken in what was called the Journalist Hill. Uh, when uh, Israel attacked uh, the last big violent attack on Gaza in 2009, uh, Gaza was, as you saw earlier, behind a black screen, behind a, a dark screen, and there were, the Israeli built a journalist's hill in uh, uh, nearby Gaza in order to show that we are speaking about war. We have two sides, there are missiles coming from one side, and Israel always just retaliate to that. And what you see here are Israeli public coming on Saturday with very nice clothes, with their family, with their cameras, and they are applauding for any uh, destruction of Palestinian houses in Gaza. And what uh, intrigued me in this photograph, and not in this photograph, this photograph is the beginning of another articulation, is the way that the disaster is invisible for the people shown in the photograph and later on, of course, for the spectator. So the main question is about the visibility or invisibility of the disaster uh, depending on which population. So speaking about the body politic for me was not only to including the whole governed population into uh, the archive, but uh, to understand or to reconstruct the split in the body politic between citizens and non-citizens that create two opposing sides where what happens to one side, uh, uh, the Palestinians, is not perceived as a disaster by the second side. So what the archive that I created, Act of State, made visible is on the one hand, the regime made disaster, that we are speaking about a disaster that is produced by a regime. And on the other hand, what became visible is the invisibility of that disaster as such, which means as a disaster. It doesn't mean that we don't have traces of the disaster, they are there, we just have to read them. But they are becoming invisible as we see it here. For me, the destruction of uh, 15,000 uh, houses in uh, Gaza in 2009 is a disaster but the disaster is invisible. Um, I will not dwell on this. So uh, what emerged for, uh, through the new archive was not the occupation as a phenomenon distinct in time and space, but the template of the political regime, the archive of the Israeli regime. And the main feature of, this, uh, of the Israeli regime uh, that I reconstructed along this line, who see the disaster, who, uh, who ignores the disaster, is the regime of differential rule. We have those who are governed as citizens and they should be protected from disaster and we have those who are governed as non-citizens and suffer from disaster and their disaster is seen but still kept invisible or simply unrecognized. And you can see it very clearly in this image from 67. It's an image that was taken in Jerusalem and you see a huge crowd of Israeli Jews coming to admire the Wailing Wall. The Wailing Wall is here on this side. They are looking at the Wailing Wall and they are there a few days after the destruction of the Maghrebian quarter, a medieval uh, quarter that was here, uh, 200 uh, houses uh, that were destroyed, not during war, but during a constituent violence, and what you see here in front of them are the rubbles of this Maghrebian uh, quarter that was destroyed, and uh, what you see here also is the, uh, the fact that the ruins or the destruction of this Maghrebian quarter is invisible to this crowd which is only there to admire the Wailing Wall. And this moves me to the second archive, from Palestine to Israel, 47 to 50, which is a genealogy of regime-made disaster. And when I'm speaking about regime-made disaster, I'm not speaking only about images testifying to atrocities, but I'm speaking about the fact that what is written in these images kept invisible, to, uh, uh, kept invisible although seen, and I'm referring, of course, to uh, Rosa and Krauss' uh, uh, distinction between seen and visible. Uh, 
usually this period of 47, 50 is dealt by historians and even by uh, new historians, and I'm speaking now mainly on Israeli uh, historians, as uh, a passage from war, from war between two sides into the creation of the state of Israel. And I, I claim that the use of the term war is problematic, and I'm trying to show it in this archive, the problem, the, being the fact that this term is problematic to describe what took there, and I will try to show it through the images. War, first of all, implies two sides. National conflict that justifies an anachronistic reading of the past in which war between two sides was unavoidable. What took place, the violence that took place in Palestine between 47 and 50, is constructed as unavoidable. Just briefly to show you what we are speaking about. This is uh, Palestine in 46. What you see as green, uh, the, ma the majority of the land is uh, uh, populated by Palestinians, and these are, I think, five to seven percent uh, populated by Jews. This is the destructive partition plan uh, uh, presented by the United Nations in 47, the splitting the land against the will of the majority of the population, the green part for Palestinian, the white for Israelis. This is the outcome of the constituent violence of the Israeli Jews that they uh, said allegedly that they are accepting the partition plan, but actually they conquered much more than the partition plan uh, suggested them, and this is the recent situation, uh, and you can see that the Palestinian territory, territory, if you can call it territories, are completely uh, fragmented. Uh, so what I try to do in the second archive is, of course, not to accept the Zionist narrative of independence culminating in the establishment of the State of Israel, but I didn't want to accept also the, the story of the Nakba, which is the Palestinian story about the Palestinian catastrophe of 48, because the Nakba is uh, uh, equally insufficient to give account to what happened in, in uh, Palestine between 47 and 50, and 50, because it presupposes and reproduces the split between the two national population as if the two national population were split prior to 47. So I try to replace the, the logic of the archive is uh, trying to replace the term war that imply two national side by the term constituent violence that create a regime a disaster when the entire citizenry is affected, not only Palestinians, also Jews who lost their common life with Palestinians, lost the life that was in Palestine before. And from the constituent violence, what I'm trying to create, the surface of appearance that I'm trying to create is a surface of appearance where expulsion, destruction, dispossession that we are looking at uh, should be questioned uh, as affecting the whole population, the victims, the immediate victims who were, of course, the Palestinians, but also the Israeli Jews who became perpetrators as well as the generation of descendants to the perpetrators, which I consider myself being descendant of, descendant of the perpetrators, and this is what rendered the past for me incomplete. This is why I insist that the past is incomplete in order to get rid, in order to reconceptualize my position as descendant of perpetrators, because I want to claim my right not to be a perpetrator. Uh, so, what I will try to show now briefly through a few images uh, taken from 47 to 50, that we are, what we are looking at is not the outcome of a national conflict, but we are facing the very moment of the construction of the constitution of an unbridgeable divide between uh, uh, the photographed persons between Jews and uh, Arabs. So what you see here in these images, and now the images that I will show you are coming from state archive. And what intrigued me, of course, is to take images coming from state archive and read them against the grain and sometimes along the grain. So this image, for example, is the implementation of one of the first borders in the area. Uh, my grandfather, for example, who, who was born in Palestine, he was already th uh, second generation in Palestine, he was Jew. He used to go to uh, Beirut to have his vacation. He used to go to Amman uh, 
visit his students' friends, etc., etc. So this is the uh, installation of the border that creates physically, architectonically, politically, the divide between Jews and Arabs. And what you have here in these two signs are signs uh, in the entrance of a Palestinian village, of Palestinian village where the villagers were not expelled. They were authorized to stay under military uh, rule. And the signs are not affecting only the Palestinians. The signs are addressing, they are in Hebrew, they are addressing the Israeli Jews who are not allowed anymore to have commerce relation with Palestinians, which means that the borders, they are not affecting only one population. Borders always affect, of course, two populations. And what we have here, is an image of uh, a shop in El Nasira, in Nazareth, Nazareth, uh, and the official titles say a shop in Nazareth fills up with Jewish products, which is of course the proud that the archivist or the photographer felt toward this, uh, uh, the new uh, Jewish product that are invading the Palestinian shop is what kept this image accessible, of course, for another reading. And what we have here is an image very frequent in many uh, Israeli Jewish albums. You have children that were uh, sent with schools in order to get rid of stones in abandoned villages. Uh, and what you have here, this image in uh, Jerusalem, you have the remnants of uh, the presence of Palestinian occupier of this uh, big restaurant, El Arz, and you have here already is uh, Jewish signs just after the expulsion of the uh, uh, big uh, majority of the Jerusalemite. Palestinians. And what you have here is not uh, the outcome of war, of Arab uh, bom bombardment, but what you have here is the constituent violence of destructing 200 uh, uh, houses in the central city of Haifa in order to uh, transform Haifa as an unfamiliar place to Palestinians who stayed in Haifa. And uh, this image, which will be the last one from that archive, and I want to move to potential history, it's one of the images of the uh, expelling Palestinians. This is from uh, El Ramle. And what you see here, of course, is uh, uh, Palestinians and Israeli Jews that are taking care, they are administrating the, uh, the expulsion. Um, but potential history, and now I want to move from this archive to potential history, should, under, should be understood in dual sense. First, unrealized possibilities that still motivated and directed the actions of various actors in the past. I will not have time to dwell on it, but now I'm working on a new research on uh, the collaboration between Jews and Arabs in 47, 48, when they did everything all over Palestine to avoid the violence that was led by Ben Gurion and his, uh, a, 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 his army or his guerrilla army or his gang or whatever. And the other... Uh, 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 feature of potential history are possibilities that may become our, our own possibilities today and be reactivated to guide our actions. And this is what guides me in creating this archive. So it, the idea is to move from history shaped by the dominant perspective of, the, of sovereign nationalism, which is completely linked to, to the male historical philosophy that we inherited that I'm trying to reshape but not having time, of course, to deal about with it today, to a potential history insisting on restoring and inventing and imagining within the order of things a, poly a polyphony of civil relations and forms of being together that existed at any moment in history without being exhausted by sovereign power. And what you have here is an image from 47 Haifa Hospital, Jewish, uh, Jew, Jewish Arab and Armenian staff. She is a Jewish uh, nurse. Uh, it, this photograph is coming from her album. And this one is an Armenian doctor. This one is a Palestinian doctor. And among the three nurses, there is one Jewish and two Arabs, but I uh, was unable to uh, recognize. But at least you see a very common situation in Haifa 
staff at the hospital working together, look at their, the intimacy of the relation between them. And here you have Margot, uh, a Jewish uh, resident of Palestine at the time, with her Arab friend on the right and uh, a, a Jewish friend on uh, the left. And I think that Akram has a very similar image from uh, Ayarkon, I don't know how you call it, uh, in uh, Tel Aviv. And this image from the Jewish procession of Purim in Tel Aviv, the procession is here. We're speaking about the 30s, and what you have in the crowd very casually are, of course, Palestinians mixed with Jews coming to assist the Jewish procession of uh, uh, Purim. What you have here is even more complex as an image. What you have here is an image uh, uh, just uh, very close to the moment when the UN uh, declared a partition plan, and what you have here are Israeli Jewish, Jews uh, creating a new uh, colony in Palestine. Nevertheless, there is a Palestinian who is helping them because he's living nearby and they have very good relations. And at that point, although there were rumors that the Jewish will be violent, that it was not necessarily the, the, the way that history should have uh, turned. So they are uh, working together to create this new colony. And what you have here, this image from, uh, uh, from the 40s in Tiberias, you have uh, Dr. Torrance uh, uh, speaking with two Jewish patients, and you have, of course, in the background, Palestinians. And what you have here in this image is not only the way that it was stored in the archive as Bladerstone cases, the two kids here, but what you, see, you have here is the confidence that the Israeli boy is giving to the father of the Palestinian boy while being taken in a photograph. And this another photograph from the Orgez archive is a grandfather. These are the staff of uh, Tel Aviv and Jaffa. Jaffa was uh, Palestinian, Tel Aviv was a new uh, Jewish colony. And they of course work together because you cannot work on uh, uh, infrastructure, engineering uh, urban inf infrastructures without taking in account the whole area. And this one, uh, uh, a photograph from uh, El Main Coffee in uh, Ganawai El Main, this was its double name, uh, from 46 in uh, 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 Sheikh Munis, a very popular cafe led by Israeli, uh, by not Israeli at the time, 47, by a Jewish and Arab, and of course the, the mixed population that came to the coffee. And here, but I would like to move from these type of images when we see various forms of exchange relation. Ontologically, they are there together between Jews and Arabs. It's not an idealistic way that I want to present uh, the past. It's just mere ontology. They shared life together. They had various forms of relations. But I want to move from these images that uh, uh, testify to these various moments to these kind of violent images that destroyed this uh, 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 complex, vivid, uh, vital life in Palestine, to these images in which we see the constituent violence of dividing the two population and expelling 700,000 of Palestinians. And here what we have is the white flag, but the white flag didn't help them. The village was destroyed just after. So I skip all these images to move to these images. What we have here is only the imposition of the military logic. We are not speaking about uh, a Palestinian community here, but about the Jewish community. We are speaking on Jerusalem. It is already Jewish, this quarter. And this is a moment of curfew. The curfew is not curfew imposed on Palestinians, but on Jews. And she is little bit lost in the street, and of course, whom she addressing? A military, because the military start to give the answers. And this is the first day of draft in Tel Aviv, which was not a big success. People from Tel Aviv, as you can see here, in the same time, didn't want to go to the army, didn't want to uh, participate in the violence between Jews and Arabs, so Tel Aviv was put under curfew for seven days, 3,000 soldiers with dogs, it looks like a hectic situation of uh, urban situation. No, it is not. These are only militaries and dogs looking during seven days after uh, Jew Jews who are not willing to go to the army. So the imposition of the military logic was on the entire uh, uh, population, what rest from the Palestinian and of course from the Jewish, to draft them, to mobilize them to the new logic of ignoring the disaster of other as a disaster. 
And uh, just let me to come back to this image of, uh, uh, of El Ramle, uh, when becoming refugee was clearly the Palestinians photographed person catastrophe, but becoming perpetrators or descendants of perpetrators was the Israeli Jews uh, a catastrophe. And when we are looking at such, image, such images, we cannot look at it only as what was done to the Palestinians, because what we have here are not only Palestinians with their catastrophe as if it was their feature. What we have here is a situation of becoming refugee while becoming perpetrators. And when I'm speaking about a new surface of appearance for the archive, a new surface of appearance in which the whole governed population is taken in account, I want to create a surface where these uh, what became two sides are in the same uh, plane in order to find uh, 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 in order to recognize, to imagine, to invent the unavoidable seeds of a future where this violence should be accounted for, where forgiveness should be sought and granted. This is what I called potential history. It is a historical document of a moment of destruction which contains at the same time the potentiality of giving account, recognizing a debt, seeking and granting forgiveness, reconstructing just coexistence. As long as history is kept incomplete, to use, uh, to use Walter Benjamin uh, terms, Palestinians can and should, of course, and this is what they are doing, claim their right to return to their land, to their country, and also Le Droit de Cité, which I won't have time to develop, but inspired by Etienne Balibar, and the Israel can and should, and unfortunately this is not what they are doing, only a tiny minority, claim their universal right not to be perpetrators. Thank you.